So hi everybody, welcome back to Law Hero, my name is Jen and today we are going to watch uh, a video I recorded between myself and Terry Gorey Solicitor. Uh, you can get his details in my bio, you can also follow his uh, YouTube, he's brilliant on YouTube and uh, this is the very first time I did some like a podcast interview style video. Uh, I hope to do one every week from here on out. And I've had to split it into two videos because YouTube only allowed me upload 15 minutes. So there's going to be a part one and part two. I'm sure you'll understand. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. If you did, leave a like and comment what was the most insightful thing you took from our exchange. Um, for me, it was definitely around Terry's time management. I think that was... Uh, fantastic to learn how he does all of that so yeah I mean for me it was such an honor he is basically the reason I got into YouTube and I just have so much respect for him so yeah I'm absolutely delighted to cut to our conversation I think yeah you you can teach us a lot so for my listeners I just want to explain how I found Terry first of all and I think this yeah. might be interesting for you and your algorithm so uh, I failed employment law on PPC2. Okay. So the first exam I failed in my whole life. Yeah. The last one, you know yourself with the PPC2, you're at the last yeah. second. And then I went and failed it again. So I yeah. failed it twice, right? Yeah. And at that point, I went to YouTube. <laughs> and I typed in employment law Ireland. And who yeah, comes yeah. up on yourself? Yeah, yeah. So you have a few handy videos around unfair dismissals and things like that. Yeah. And then I passed the exam. <laughs> very good, very good. So I'm, I'm glad I was instrumental in your success. Or... You were, you were. And that was 2018. So Terry, I found you in 2018 on YouTube and I've been following you since. Yeah, good okay. stuff. So if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Terry Gorey's solicitor, and just a brief introduction, just so we know who you are. Well, I'm a solicitor, obviously, and I, I'm a late convert to the law. I was self-employed businessman from uh, the age of 23 when I was uh, in 1986, right up to uh, 2008 or 2009 when the property market crashed. So up to that point, I was involved in retailing mainly. Then I got into property and had a fairly large investment in the property market. The market crashed and I like many, many people got wiped out. So I was in my early 40s, had to do something, had no capital, had lost everything, always wanted to do law and decided at that stage I'd go back to college or go back and try and have a go at the exam. So I did the course there in Griffith College for the preparatory course for the FE1s. I did it sort of full time on a very intensive basis. I sat the eight FE1s in the same week or whatever it was. And luckily enough, I passed them. Wow. Yeah. And then my, my old solicitor, my own solicitor who I've had since 1986, she said, Terry, if you ever pass the exams, I'd be happy to give you an apprenticeship. So out of the blue, like 30 years later, I rang her up. Mary, I said, you wouldn't believe it, but I've passed the bloody exams. And she said, OK, I'll give you an apprenticeship. So that's how I got into it. I qualified then in 2000 and I think it was 11 and I've been self-employed, you know, since. So I've never worked for anybody else as a qualified solicitor. I started on my own once I qualified. I was gone from the apprenticeship, but I knew that was the deal and I was happy and I was delighted with the opportunity, you know. So I started my own firm then in 2011 in Kilcock and I ran out of money after about 12 months mm. and got a job then briefly. Uh, and restarted again here in Enfield in 2013 and I'm here ever since so it's working out pretty well at this stage you know mm -hmm. and okay so obviously the self-employed thing comes from your network of connections like your you have a lot of connections in business so for you it made sense to, to be, be honest with you now those connections would have been no good to me really I mean I was starting from scratch my self-employed activity was mainly in retailing and so on so you know, there wasn't a whole pile there in terms of any old boys club or anything that I could do deals with. I mean, I was in retailing. I was in, um, you know, convenience stores and petrol stations and so on. I was okay. flipping properties and that sort of thing. So I was starting from scratch then years later when I qualified. But okay. during the, when I was in the law society, 
um, as a sort of a, an assistance, uh, an assist to help me study and assimilate the information. I used to take my own notes uh, and publish them on, on a very, very basic, very rudimentary website. And as I was the, um, what do you call those things we used to do, the tutorial notes and so mm. on. I used to just uh, rewrite them because I, I found it helpful to understand uh, and publish them. And no sooner had I published them than I began to get queries from people because they were, they were online, they were on a website. I was giving basic information and people would be uh, writing to me, sending me emails, asking me, would I act for them? And I wasn't even bloody qualified for this stage. <laughs> that's interesting yeah. terry so that's how the website thing developed yeah. and, and the website thing is still going like 10 or 11 years later i have two very very strong websites that's where i got a lot of my initial business and my a lot of my initial leads and contacts but that then led to youtube and, and mm -hmm. video obviously so mm -hmm. about 10 years ago actually I, I launched or i put my first uh, video on youtube really as really just to get a good quality backlink to my website in order to help my website in the Google algorithm. And as you know, Google own YouTube. So a link from YouTube was going to be beneficial. So initially then, you know, it was only from an SEO or search engine optimization perspective that I was putting up the videos, but then they began to get a bit of traction as well. And then I began to take it seriously. And before I knew it, then I had maybe 500 or a thousand subscribers saying, Jesus, your videos are great. And I'm a student and blah, blah, blah. Now the students are no good to me. You know what I mean? Because I'm not caring for them. Mm. But obviously students don't remain students all the time and they do buy houses and they do have employment problems and they do get fired and they're injured in work and so on. So one thing led to another. And since that, then I've just gone to town on it and I produce two new videos every week. And to be honest with you, from my perspective, and this is a tip for solicitors, but for me, it's just a land grab at this stage because I have early mover uh, advantage in other words many many solicitors are not on youtube you know yourself if you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean th there's very very big firms there like matheson's and uh, others who have maybe 30 or 40 or 100 uh, subscribers mm. like for a firm of those resources you mm. would i have eleven and a half thousand subscribers and i'm one man with a mobile phone you know what i mean <laughs> and that's that's the reality of it like I'm a one man band, mobile phone, and yet I probably have the biggest uh, law related YouTube channel in Ireland. But the reason I keep putting the videos up is A, it works. Yeah. And B, I see it as uh, an early mover sort of advantage that I have. And, 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 you know, determined to go to town on it and exploit it because it's not every day that you get, uh, you know, an opportunity to build something generate leads, generate clients and so on so easily. And it is easy to be honest with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I really do think you're a pioneer, especially when it comes to utilization of online tools. And mm. I think I think you're right. Uh, the big firms have completely missed the boat on grabbing attention. And like attention is the new currency as they yeah, yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk would say that, and uh, I think I think what you've done is fantastic. I, and I wonder why there isn't more solicitors on YouTube yeah. um, using it. I as wonder as well, Jennifer, and not only that, but to be honest with you, other professions as well, like accounting, basic taxation advice, basic accounts advice for small traders. I'm getting questions there all the time, and as recently as 15 minutes ago from a guy in Cork, actually, going to do a bit of development and he wants advice about planning and he wants advice about finances. Now I'm saying to him, I can't help you with that. I have experience yeah. in that, but I'm not advising on that. I'll advise you on legal stuff, but they're like the likes of a small accountant or anybody with perhaps a bookkeeping business, uh, providing services to small sole traders. I mean, they could be doing basic stuff online. It's easy to make a YouTube video. You can do it with your phone or whatever, or a screen um, capture or software and publish it. So mm -hmm. if you become a sort of a trusted authority, if you become useful, if you produce stuff that has utility, people will trust you and people will contact you and say, oh, I saw that uh, video there about the right of way. I have a problem with it about the right of way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just in relation though, as well to the approach in relation to the videos, mm -hmm. the likes of the big five firms will have a particular production style and a particular mm -hmm. 
particular way of approaching it, which mm. is far less useful to the likes of, for example, Pavel or, or somebody who, who's just been fired from his job. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to know that you have a master's degree from Trinity and you are on the board of the local charity mm. and you are exercised by world peace and the environment. Pavel <laughs> wants to know, how is he going to get back at the bloody company that fired him? You know what I mean? Yeah. So if the video approaches the, the, the punter's problem, it's far different from, oh, we have a big firm, look at our beautiful offices, and here's beautifully stylized photographs and videos of all of the partners. Like, that's mm -hmm. bullshit, you know? Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And I, I come from a big firm background, and I've worked yeah. in big firms. Um, and I don't know if it's the country person thing in us, Terry, or maybe it's yeah. just the grafter. Um, but my father taught me how to sell, and he always said, you have to step into your customer's shoes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of the selling around law firms has become too academic. Mm, yeah. And, and, and that's where the like of, of you is mm. far more personable. And, you know, I would feel far more comfortable sharing my issue with, with you because yeah. there's a name to a face and I can relate mm. to you. Yeah. And the likes of the videos that I would do would have a certain degree of sort of roughness and authenticity <laughs> and so on. You know what I mean? But there is there's kind of method to my madness as well. And I, you know, intentionally change the scenes and I do them at home and so on. And yeah. then, like, you know, I, I represented um, a firm in Limerick there in an unemployment situation about 18 months ago or whatever. And the, one of the girls in HR had come across me on YouTube and introduced uh, the boss man to me. He a major, owns a major franchise down in Limerick. And he said, the only thing I know about you is you have lovely gardens at home. You know what I mean? <laughs> Because I that's know the you thing feed the birds. That's, that's what, yeah, absolutely. And that's stuck in his mind. And I feed the birds and so on. And people are always asking me about the bread and the birds and so on, you know. I had a consultation with two girls yesterday and they were asking me, like, before anything started, are you doing sourdough bread this weekend, you know? Oh, but this is so it. People, absolutely. But, like, that's authentic. That's real. People relate to that. That's what I do. I feed the birds. I make bread. I don't do much else. I'm into the law. And people relate to that and they know that there's a human person behind, you know, whatever uh, advice they're seeking. And that's useful, you know. You're, you're, our, you're our local Jesus. That's what you're feeding birds. And uh, well, no, no, but, uh, no, no sandals though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> under, under the suit. Well, OK, yeah. come here. I'm going to ask you a few questions. So I ask people to send in questions um, and they're quite... I don't know they're quite generic but you might um you might answer them so the first one is what's the most shocking thing you've seen another solicitor do or have you like I don't know some people behave where you say you know that's not very colleague like or yeah well look what I mean I had a, a conversation a telephone conversation yesterday and I won't name the colleague um but I got the head absolutely chewed off me for speaking over her. Now, I didn't realize or didn't believe I was, but look, at you have that. But um, I haven't had too many bad experiences with colleagues, but obviously I've read of one there recently who has, was a high profile uh, solicitor in, in the uh, criminal law solicitor who apparently has been charged with some uh, offense of, I think, assault of a former colleague of his oh, yeah. or whatever. So. Yeah. That's probably one of the worst I've seen. Like, obviously, there's a background to that and there's a history and so on. But the last time I would have came across both of those individuals, we were very much working together in, in the CCJ there, you know? Mm, yeah. So the likes of that I was surprised about, and that's about as bad as I've seen. But other than that, I haven't really had any really bad experiences. Obviously, like, from time to time, you're going to have a blowout or, or a, you know, a bust up with a colleague. And it does happen. I mean, mm. we represent our clients to the best of our ability. And emotions can run high from time to time, you know, and uh, sometimes you might be uh, accusing or thinking that the other party is taking you short or whatever, but generally um, solicitors are civilized enough, you know.